Hi, everyone, and welcome to Paper Pumpkin Week here on Creative Chelsea. Over the next couple days, I'm going to share with you 12 card ideas that you can make with one set of supplies from the March 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Memorable Meadows. The projects from this kit are perfect for this time of year. They have beautiful scenes and they just are perfect for spring. It creates a total of nine greeting cards, three in three different designs. If you would like to watch me unbox the kit and create these cards, you can click on the playlist up in the top right corner. Today I'm sharing with you my first set of alternative cards that I have made with one of the card bases from the kit. I have created four cards. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a great tip to make the most out of your supplies. Each month, I take the contents from the paper pumpkin kits and make alternative projects. My cards are easy to follow and can be made by both experienced or new paper crafters. You may need just a couple other products to complete them. You can follow along with me using supplies you already have or purchase any products you see me use from my online store. The link to all products is below in the description or on my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates when I post a new video. All four cards that I am making today come from this one card base. This is the horizontal folded card. It already comes folded. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut it so that we can remove this folded edge. And so I'm going to cut it just one eighth of an inch smaller. So it's a five and a half size. So I'm going to go to five and three eighths and trim off that edge there. And that will give me two pieces. And then I'm also going to cut a little off the top at four and one eighth. And that's just going to give me a nice even border all the way around. And I just cut those off the bottom. So these two pieces are now ready to make my cards. I also am going to use a little bit of the pattern from the envelope. So we're going to go ahead and cut open the envelope by removing the folded edges here as well. And just cut off the smallest amount to save as much of that beautiful paper as we can. We're also going to be using the back side for today's project. So make sure to hold on to that and don't throw that away. So we're going to use the pattern as well as the back of the envelope. So for today's cards, you'll notice that I used the main image as the background on two of my cards. And then if you take a closer look, you'll notice that I have some cutouts of that same image as the main image on two of the other cards. So you maybe have already guessed, but what I've done is I have removed a section from the background piece and have used that section on the second set of cards. And then we just cover up that hole and that's going to give us the most out of our supplies. So a lot of times we will put a full piece of either designer series paper, pattern paper, or even solid cardstock behind our elements. And if we want to save that pattern or paper, we can always remove elements from behind our main element. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So for this one, I decided to use the stylus shapes dies to remove a section and I'm using the largest circle. This circle is about about three inches, give and take a little bit. So it's about a three inch circle and I'm going to remove it right from about the center of this one side. And then on the second piece, I'm going to use a square. And instead of using the largest square, I'm going to use the second to largest square. So here's the largest and the second to largest. This gives me about two, about two and a quarter 
um, width and height is the square. And we're going to remove a section on the right side and not right in the middle. Now, if you don't have these stylus shaped dies, you could use a punch or you can even use your paper trimmer to carefully cut out an opening. Um, but just remember, you don't want to cut all the way through. And I do have some videos where I've shared the technique that you can do to cut out a square opening from a background piece. You could also use other shapes maybe that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. I'll be right back. Okay, so here I have my openings. Again, this one was off to the right a little bit. I just chose a section that I wanted to highlight. I liked the colors and the layout of the flowers. And the same goes here. I decided to do this one just right in the center. So I measured in and I liked the way that this um, kind of cut out the um, composition looked good in the circle. So that's kind of how I chose where to cut those. So let's go ahead and start putting some of our cards together. I'm going to start with this easy one. This just uses a plain basic white cardstock and this is the thick cardstock. It makes for a really perfect card base. Then what I did is I cut the large rectangle that coordinates with this um, rectangle that we cut or used to cut out our pattern and I'm just going to add it over that large rectangle there and that's going to give me a nice border to make it look kind of like a picture frame. This layer layout is quite simple and really easy to do when you have beautiful pattern paper that you want to highlight. Next I'm just going to place it right onto my card base. Try to center it on the width and then I like to place it just a little higher on the card base. So it's about the same on all the sides. So it's going to look something like this and then we can stamp the greeting. The greeting I decided to use was You've Been On My Mind from the stamp set in the kit. And I'm going to ink this up with the garden green ink that also came in the kit. And then I'm going to stamp it right in the center of some scratch paper. This is just basic white cardstock that I have on hand. And then I'm going to be using another one of the dies from the kit to cut this out. So the die I'm using to cut out the greeting is the thin long one. Okay, and I'll give you a tip here on how to cut out this greeting because you'll see that it is slightly bigger than the um, die. So what you're going to do is a partial die cut. So you lay it out so that it can cut off half of the greeting. And when you layer this together, let me show you how you do that with your stamp and cut and emboss machine. So you take your bottom plate like this on your stamp and cut and emboss machine and you're going to lay it down. You may want to use some washi tape or something to hold it in place. And you're going to place the top layer over the on only over the area you want to cut out. So it would be on the right side because you can see here that my greeting is going to be cut in half if I cut on this side. So only place it on the area you want and then you run it through like this. Okay, so you'll see that it only cuts out half and then we're going to repeat that on the second side. But it's really important that you try to line up the die into the previous cut. So bring it down to where you want it and then just make sure that it's not sliding around. And then you want to make sure that when you layer this that you do cut out up to the previous cut so that you know you're going to get a nice clean cut all the way through. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. You can see how it fits perfectly with that long greeting. I next added some dimensionals to the back and I'm going to place that 
near the bottom as straight as I can on my card and it will look something like this and then I'll take my sequins that came in the kit and add just some couple embellishments just for fun maybe I'll do another small one here so I added three two to the left and one to the bottom right underneath the greeting and that simple card is all done I love the simplicity of this card it's quick easy and just has a really beautiful look to it and really highlights the beauty of that pattern paper really easy to replicate this is the next card we're going to create. It's another simple card, but uses a little more layering and texture. So I, again, I'm starting with a thick, basic white cardstock as my card base. And we're going to pull this pattern from the envelope. And we wanna cut about one and three fourths inches off the bottom. And we're going to add this to the left side of our card base. If it's a little long, we can always trim it down. So it goes right up to that folded edge there. And don't forget to smooth out that liquid glue. So it looks something like this. Then I wanted to add a little pop of color so I have my Fresh Freesia piece here and I'm going to just butt that up to it. And again, if it's a little long, I can trim it to fit. Oh, it's perfect. All right. So right now we've got two colors. So for the next step, I wanted to create some texture in the white area, but I didn't want to actually emboss my card base. So I took a two inch strip of basic white cardstock and I'm going to emboss this. And I really wanted something nice and simple. So I'm going to use the basic 3D pack. This is kind of the crosshatch pattern. I really like this pattern and use it on quite a bit of projects. You can find this product online, and again, the links will be below in the description. So you can see how nice that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my card base, and it's going to overlap a little bit of that fresh freesia and make it a little bit skinnier. Bring that all the way up to the top and to the sides. And if I have a little overhang, which it looks like I do, I'll just trim that off. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, make sure everything is nice and smooth. It's going to look like this. Now this is really pretty, but I do have some of the vellum that comes in the kit. And I want a nice long piece. And this edge piece here is perfect for my card. So I'm going to begin by separating it on the top and bottom from the frame. And then right here, I'm just going to remove nice straight cut to remove it from that center piece. And now I have a nice straight piece that I can add to my card with a little liquid glue on the back. I like this vellum a lot because it hides the, the adhesive really well. And I'm gonna put this over the pattern and the fresh freesia piece. Okay, and if you want, you can use your grid paper to make sure everything lines up nicely and is nice and straight all the way down. Okay, so that's just an easy way to kind of cover the front of your card base with some different colors and patterns. And again, if you have any pieces that overlap, just take your paper snips and trim them down to size. Then you're going to take your circle with the pattern on it, 
add a couple dimensionals to the back and place this near the top area like that. And then you're going to stamp your greeting on some basic white cardstock. And I wanted to coordinate in this dark purple, which is gorgeous grape. If you don't have this color, you could use the garden green that comes in the kit, or you could use a different coordinating color. So it's going to look something like this. And then you're going to fussy cut that out and you'll end up with the two words separate from each other and you can add these right to the center with some dimensionals like that really pretty card now if you want to add any other little details on my original card I did stamp some of the splatter image now this image comes from the second stamp set that was in the March kit um, this bonus stamp set was only given out to subscribers and so if by chance you get this kit in a different way you may or may not have the um, second stamp set. You can stamp it in gorgeous grape or I thought it might be nice to do it a little lighter with the fresh freesia which is that same color of lighter purple cardstock that I used. And I'm just going to ink it up and stamp around my circle, making sure I don't get ink on the actual image, like the pattern paper. And maybe one down in the corner. And that just adds a little more details to the card. It's really pretty. And then the last thing, of course, are some of the sequins. And you can place these wherever you'd like. I'm going to add a large one to the white area along with the small one down at the bottom. And then maybe another small one up near the greeting. Just a simple little touch of bling to finish off that card. And that is our second card. It's not quite as easy as our first, but still really simple and easy to put together. All right, let's move on to another card. This one uses the pattern in the background that we had left over from cutting out those um, main focal point images that we did or shapes that we did. So we've got another thick basic white cardstock. And we're going to add the pattern paper right to the center with some liquid glue. Make sure there's that thin border all the way around. Once it's attached, go ahead and open it and smooth that glue out. Okay, so it's going to look like that. To cover up this opening, we're going to use the same die. We're going to cut out a piece of fresh freesia cardstock with that exact same die that we used to cut this. And we can just fit it right into that opening. And that's going to cover up that opening. So that is one way to cover up if you do this. So it just fits perfectly in there and you get to see that beautiful fun stitching all the way around as well. Our main image is a stamp. It's the extra stamp that came in the kit. It's got these really large beautiful flowers. If by chance you don't have this you could also use the small flowers or the small flower that came in the kit along with those greetings. So you can have fun and be creative. So I'm going to pull in a piece of basic white cardstock I'm going to take the fresh freesia and I'm going to start, actually I need to do the main image first. So we're going to pull in the garden green ink and to make this easier I'm going to use the large um, ink pad because it's such a large image. I'm going to use a large um, clear block as well. 
so ink that up. If you only have the Stampin' Spot, that's fine. It's going to do a great job of inking that up. Stamp that onto your basic white cardstock. And while we have the green out, let's go ahead and grab the leaves. So there's some solid leaves here that you can use. I'm going to pop that onto a clear block here. And if I stamp this full strength, I'm going to have a nice dark leaf, but I want it to be a little lighter so I can see the outline. So I'm going to actually stamp off and then stamp on. Nice even pressure all the way around. And you're going to get this really beautiful lighter green that complements that dark green really well. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the flowers, but we're going to do that in fresh freesia. So we have this solid flower is where we're going to start. Pick that up with your clear block, ink it up, stamp it off first, and then you're gonna stamp it over. Make sure all those petals line up with the outline and you're going to get this nice light purple. Can you even see that purple? It's there, I promise. I might actually do one more. I think that my paper is picking up a lot of the ink, so I'm going to be a little quicker so that I can leave a little more ink on that stamp. And we'll try again. There we go, that's better. So the next image we're going to do is this kind of spiky looking one. It's going to add shadow to the inside of your flowers and we're gonna do this with full strength ink. Just like that. I love how the layers on that look. We're not going to do the leaf one. The leaf one is kind of that long skinny piece that we haven't used yet. Let me show you on the printout. It's this one here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is stamp the inside, which is the little yellow circle part. I'm gonna pick that up and we're gonna stamp that in Daffodil Delight. Again, if you don't have these exact colors, use what you have. If you have been getting paper pumpkin for a while, then you may have colors that are similar to what I'm using. Okay, so there we go. Our image for that main image on the back is all done. I'm also going to just go ahead and stamp the greeting um, just to, so that we can um, cut it out at the same time. And the greeting that I want to use it does come from that first set. This is the main set. It is um, this one here. It's the little things that matter. And we're going to stamp it twice. One of them we're going to cut out with the coordinating circle die. And then we're going to fussy cut out the other. All right, so when looking at your stylus shapes dies, this is the large one that we cut um, out our pattern and our fresh freesia. And then we go to the next one is the one we're going to cut out the flowers from. So we can line that up and you can uh, cut it however you want. And then we're gonna skip one and go to the next one. And this is the one I'm going to use to cut out my greeting. And I realize I'm going to be removing some of the text. And so that's why we're going to be fussy cutting out the other. So just try to place it so that the top and bottom are in the center of the circle and then go ahead and cut that. All right, so I've gone ahead and fussy cut that little things out and then also cut out those two images with the dies. We're gonna put that on hold for just a minute and we're going to pull in the gorgeous grape vellum 
This is the skinnier piece, and I'm gonna cut this in half. So this piece is just about an inch. So as you're trying to figure out the middle point, just make sure it looks even on both sides of that cut line. You're gonna save one piece, and then take the other piece and cut that in half at about just a little bit more than one and a half inches on both sides, okay? Then you will take, I think we're just gonna use one actually, and you're gonna cut an angle off of each side. And you wanna do the same angle. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. And then you're going to cut that right in half. So you have a piece that's about one and a half inches, and now we've cut that down even more. And I think the best way to apply this is to take your ruler and um, just place it right in the center and then go down just a little bit so that your gorgeous grape vellum piece can be attached on each side at about center point. You want to make sure that the ends are going to be covered up by that middle point too. So that it's gonna be quite open in the middle, but you wanna make sure that it that you don't see that gap on the outside. So this is going to be added with a little liquid glue. So it's just right out here and right about here. So that's what it's gonna kind of look like. Go ahead and add dimensionals to the back of these images and you're going to place them in the center of everything. So there's the flowers. And then for this one, I put dimensionals on just the right bottom side so that I can do a little overlapping. Make sure your greeting is straight on your card. So it's gonna look something like that. And then you'll take your um, little things, add a little bit of liquid adhesive in the middle on the back, and then just lay that over the stamped image and that's going to help you finish off that greeting so that it's not missing. And then the last thing we're going to do is add some sequins and I'm gonna place them over here by the greeting too and then let's do one down there. Really fun card. I love this beautiful stamp here. It's really easy to make it gorgeous with that um, second generation stamping, which is where we stamp off and then stamp on. All right, so we're now onto our last card. For this card, I've already added the background to my cardstock of Thick Basic White Card Base cardstock. And I'm going to then take the back of my envelope and I'm gonna cut out the large rectangle um, and that's going to cover up the opening of the smaller rectangle. So I wanna make sure that when I cut it, I don't cut where this uh, double paper is. So it's more right in the center. I kind of like moving it a little off to the side though. All right, to do this um, beautiful focal area, we're gonna do some stamping and we're doing like a no line watercoloring technique. So to do that, I want to use a light ink color. I'm going to use crumb cake. And I think I'm going to do a stamp off and then stamp on so that it's nice and light. So ink up. This is the single flower that comes in the original stamp set. So I'm gonna stamp it to the left of center. So not all the way up to the left on the edge but just left of center. You can barely see that line. That's what we want. And then I'm going to do kind of the same thing. I'm gonna just clean it a little bit. I'm gonna only ink up the um, flower. So I don't want to ink that stem right there at all. So just the flower like that. And then oops, stamp off. 
and then you're going to stamp on but do it at a different angle. So I'm going to stamp right here underneath the first one. Can you see that? And you can see there's no stem. So now you're going to do clean it off and then you're going to ink up just above the leaf, kind of in between the flower and that top of that leaf. That's where you want to ink it, but you want that bottom part. And then stamp off, and then you're gonna connect that flower to the leaves, and it can be a little lower too. Okay, so it's maybe a little more straight. It's very cute. So that's going to be our image that we're going to use um, to do our painting. Now the colors that I want to use are garden green and I am going to use the ink spot so I can show you how to do that. I'm also using the Daffodil Delight and the Fresh Freesia. So those are the same colors that we've been coloring with. I've got a little bit of water and you're going to grab your clear block any clear block will work and you can add some ink from your ink spot to the top of your clear block and then with any water painter or brush just pick up a little bit of water and a little bit of ink and you're going to slowly add color to your image here. And I only mean slowly because we don't want to put a ton of water. This is that envelope paper which surprisingly enough does really well with water. And so, but we just don't want to have too much water, okay? You're also gonna to wanna to fill in that right leaf. So the on the image, it doesn't actually finish. It's kind of an open leaf. So you'll wanna just fill it in to create that leaf look. You'll also take a little bit of color and bring it down the stem as well. Get a little darker color and you can add a little shadow to the leaf. Okay. So something like that. Not hard, really quite easy to do. If you're using the regular ink pads, when it's closed, you can squeeze it. And that's one way to get ink into the lid, which is where I like to add it for water coloring. So just clean your brush, pick up a little color, and you wanna leave some of the um, petal white. Okay, so just do what you feel like you need to get the look that you're wanting. I like to kind of go around the edge to kind of remove that crumb cake look. So that it feels like a no line watercolor. A little darker color. you see that? So just fill in those petals. Again, leave a little bit of white if you can. And there's the second one. So these are also going to dry really quickly, which is another thing that I like about this watercolor paper. Let's go next to the yellow. We're just gonna do a little bit of color right here near the top. And then if you wanna pick up just a little bit of just ink, just to add a little darker right near the base to give it 
more three-dimensional. You may want to wait for that to dry a little bit and then you can add even more dark color there. All right. You know, I do remember that I added a little bit of blue. I'm going to grab um, some balmy blue. I think that will be nice. Okay, so clean my brush. I'm going to leave that yellow open just so that I can go in and add a little more. Be careful. I don't want this to be very dark, so I'm going to just get a little bit of ink, lots of water, and maybe just a little more water. And then just kind of do a wash on this side. And then if I want, I could do a little bit in the corner. You could even come between like that. Okay, not sure if you can even see that, but there's just a little bit of blue wash so that it's not quite so white. Okay, I think the yellow area is probably all dry, so I'm just going to dab in a little darker color just right along that bottom corner. So next I'm going to take the Garden Green ink and you can use your Stampin' Spot again. And I'm going to stamp my greeting, which is have a beautiful birthday. Now you wanna make sure this is completely dry before you stamp your greeting. Um, I did just hit it with my heat tool. And it's okay if there's a little overlap happening with those flowers. And then just to give the flowers a little more of that same drawn look that the background has, I am going to use um, a gel pen. Now Stampin' Up! doesn't sell gel pens, but you can really buy these anywhere, even on Amazon, craft stores, things like that. So this one is a jelly roll. It's a number 10. I'm going to start by adding just some three little dots in the yellow kind of opposite of the darker area that I painted. I'm also going to take it and just do some uh, details around the center of each petal. So something like that. So something like that. Then I'm going to do a little bit to the leaves as well. Just a little to the inside. And I think that just really helps those pop. Gives them a similar look to the pattern of card that um, we've added, that card base that we've added there. So that's going to look really beautiful there. If you want to add some more texture, you can add the um, splatter stamp in the balmy blue if you want. I think this one I did it, and I think for this one I'm not going to do it. But I do want to add just a little touch of purple um, underneath. So I wanted this to look a little bit like a tag, so I took my um, paper snips and just cut the corners at a slight angle. This is that other piece that we had. So if you remember, we cut it in half, then we cut it in half again, used the other half for the previous card, number three, and now we have that leftover piece. I'm gonna just add a little glue to the top edge, or the edge that's gonna hide underneath, and then place that in the bottom right, or bottom left area on that edge there, just to create that tag kind of look. Then on the back, I'm going to add dimensionals. Once I have all those dimensionals on there, you're just gonna cover up that opening. Just like that. And if you want, you can add some of the sequins. I'm gonna place some here by my flowers. And then let's do one down by the greeting. I think that looks really great, especially since I didn't add the dots. So here's the one with the dots, and here's the one with the sequins. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me create these four cards with one card base from the March 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you're interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images on how I created these cards, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you would like to receive your own subscription to Paper Pumpkin, please subscribe using the link in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.